Before to introduce myself, uh, I would like to, to thank uh, you, Andres, and uh, Elite Performance Football to have invited me to, to speak with the other colleagues, because I know that there are colleagues from Portugal, of course, and uh, this reminds me of my time in Portugal, in Algarve, beautiful place. A few years ago, I had a short spell there, so uh, I'm very happy for, uh, for that. And also colleagues from uh, other part, uh, parts of Europe, uh, something of them uh, I know already, something uh, I don't know, so it's, it's very good to be here and share what is not only um, IS Roma model, but also my model, my, I think my uh, principles. This is uh, already something I, would, I want to, I wish to know, to, to say that um, when I first came in two years ago to IS Roma, uh, the best thing was that I, um, I found there an environment uh, and a philosophy, uh, a coaching methodology that fits exactly uh, what is my my ideas on football and on coaching so that was the perfect start for me and uh, helped me to to may to do my my job at at my best so um of course uh, one thing I, I want you to know andres and that of course i apologize already for my broken english especially with the uh, english speaking people and uh, please if you need to interrupt me whenever uh, you, you think is, uh, you want. So please do it, no problem. I would like to be this, uh, this presentation to be more a chat with, uh, with colleagues rather than a lecture. Uh, but anyway. Um, okay, if Fabrizio, you... let me just interrupt you yeah. for, uh, just for a second because um, I need to, to give the details uh, in the rules right. of, uh, of the exactly. lecture to everyone because we already have uh, 85, 85 viewers. Um, so, um, I will start in English and then I will, I will yeah. uh, say it in Portuguese. Um, so, um, every, every microphone are, um, are muted, okay? Only me and Fabrizio uh, are, are active because if everyone's microphone was on, so it will be, it will be a big mess because everyone is at home and uh, with their, their sounds, sounds of their home. And I, I know that a lot of you are not, are not alone. So uh, just to make sure that uh, goes everything okay, um, uh, we have muted um, all the microphones. If you have any question, okay, to, to do to Fabrizio, just uh, dial the question in the chat, in the, the, in the chat space, and then I will ask the question or I will um, pass the information to Fabrizio and Fabrizio will um, we'll discuss right from there. O que eu estava a dizer, Relativamente aos microfones, eles estão, estão todos desligados, porque cada um está em sua casa e, como é óbvio, alguns estão em silêncio, outros não estão, e isso iria gerar muita confusão naquilo que é a formação, e então foi decidido que seria melhor os microfones ficarem desligados, que um, vai fazer com que esta, esta formação decorra com, com, com muita naturalidade e sem, sem qualquer precipitação. Relativamente a alguma questão ou algum comentário que queiram fazer, sintam-se à vontade, têm... O, uh, a zona do chat podem, podem uh, lá inserir os comentários e as perguntas que acharem necessárias e aí depois eu faço, faço passar essa, essa mensagem ao Fabrício se for em português passo diretamente se for em inglês o Fabrício se, se entretanto eu conseguir ler vai responder no momento certo cada, cada, portanto, neste tema vamos ter vários subtemas por cada subtema vamos abrir espaço para perguntas nessa altura façam perguntas sintam-se à vontade é para isso nós estamos aqui. Uh, I was saying that um, we will have uh, some space um, between the, the, some subjects that Fabrice will talk about. Uh, after, after those um, small subjects, we will have some space for questions. Okay, feel free to ask. This, uh, we want this with a good dynamic. Okay, we don't want this just for Fabrice staying here and talk, talk, talk from uh, one hour and one hour and 20 minutes, okay? Let's just uh, make this uh, a good lecture, a good dynamics, okay? And everyone enjoy it because this is the main, the main goal of elite performance football is to everyone enjoy and to everyone learn, okay? Uh, o objetivo é que toda a gente aprenda, toda a gente sinta bem, façam perguntas, estejam à vontade, vamos criar dinâmica, esse é o nosso objetivo, okay? Boa formação a todos. Fabrizio, whenever you feel like, you can yeah. start, okay? Uh, 
Did you maybe remind uh, about the video problem? Oh, ah, yeah. Them? Sorry. Uh, no problem. Vamos, o Fabrício tem alguns vídeos para mostrar, mas infelizmente a nível do stream, o vídeo, se for, se for mostrado através do Zoom, vai perder qualidade e vai perder velocidade. Então, vou colocar um, no chat o link para que possam aceder a uma lista, uma playlist que está por ordem, que o Fabrício organizou, para que possam acompanhar os vídeos em tempo, em tempo real. Quando o Fabrício vos pedir para pararem o vídeo, vocês entretanto no vosso YouTube, vão ao segundo em que o Fabrício vos pedir para o vídeo para que ele consiga explicar aquilo que, que pretende. I was saying that uh, because of the, the stream, it is not good um, in Zoom to show some videos, because Fabrício will show some videos in the, in the platform. Um, what we'll do is I will put a link on the, on the chat with a, a playlist of videos on, on YouTube. Um, and then when Fabrizio starts to, 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 to start to talking about the videos, you will have to copy paste the, the link and then insert on YouTube, on the Google Chrome or Internet Explorer or whatever browser that you use. And then um, Fabrizio will start to talk about, will ask you to stop the video on, uh, on uh, some, some seconds, okay? You stop and then Fabrizio will talk about what uh, he feels like about um, the video. Okay, let's, I think there's yeah, that's it. no doubts, okay? No, no we can yeah. Perfect. Uh, Ismael está a perguntar se podemos gravar. Ismael is asking if that you can record. Yes, you can, no problem at all, okay? This will be, we will have this in the YouTube channel as well, after this. Vamos criar, estamos a criar um, um, um canal de YouTube só para estas formações, vão ter esse acesso. Ok, portanto, não se preocupem, se quiserem gravar, gravem, se não quiserem, esperem que no final do dia estarão lá os vídeos para vocês poderem usufruir. Um, if you want to, to record it, you can do it. If you don't want, don't bother, because um, by the end of today, we will have the video in our YouTube channel for you to, to access it. Ok? Thank you, okay. everyone. Ok, uh, I would like to, to start. Can, can, you, uh, can you see the... The presentation already. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, perfect. everyone are seeing the presentation. Okay. Good. Fantastic. All right. So, um, as as Andres said, I'm I'm going to explain something about uh, principles and coaching methodology methodology uh, at S Roma, and of course, specifically with regards to my age level, which is under 17, but everything I'm talking about here today uh, is easily applied. Uh, to to under 15, under 16, uh, until under 19, I think, because basically the principles are the same and uh, the methodology is the same as well. So I'm trying to keep it a bit short, then we can have space more for the, for the questions. A, a short introduction of myself. I started to coach in 2003 in the in a youth at youth level in my local club where I, where I was living at, at the moment at the time then I had the, the chance to to work for three years for an important project of FC Interna Internazionale Milano uh, which uh, gave me the chance to to travel the world around the world many countries so uh, I I had the chance also to Uh, improve a bit my, my English. Then I came back to Italy to work for uh, a local, a small club in a fourth tier in, in, in Italy. Then uh, the turning point of my, of my career, going to, I went to, to United Kingdom, uh, to England, uh, working uh, at the League Two and then League One level. Then with the, with a the spell in the Premier League as assistant manager in uh, Sunderland AFC. Then, uh, as I said before in, the, in my introduction, uh, a short spell in the second uh, division, in Segunda Liga in Portugal at uh, uh, Olianense. Then I came back to Sampdoria, again as a youth coach uh, in, the, in, the youth, in the academy. Then uh, <clears throat> I moved to Finland, where I started as a, a first team coach or assistant manager. And then I became head coach there. Uh, and then Since uh, 2018, I'm working for AS Roma, always with the, with the under 17. Um, the first thing I want to, I want to say is that, um, as, as the, the slide says, the focus is on the player. So I think this is, 
should be right in every every single club in the world, which reg with regards to uh, youth um, players. So we all know that not all the players are going to make it to the professional football. So uh, our energy and everything we do should be focused on the on the the, the individual players, and uh, especially at this age because they have already um, acquired some uh, experience and uh, uh, there this is the turning point um, that can lead to become a professional player or or not so every single uh, every single thing we do should uh, should lead to to this and all the energy as i said we have to spend we have to spend on 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 every single player i will uh, quickly um, show the, the the areas where we we um, work to to make this happen. So the first thing is the game model. Then I will come back to to every every single point to to go uh, further in the details. Then, of course, there are tactical principles that basically are what we use what we use to build a game model. Then the technical tools, uh, I, we call it tools because we think, I think personally, but also at the club, we think that techniques itself uh, alone don't mean anything, but they have to be a tool, uh, a mean to an end. So tools to solve tactical problems, football problems. Then, of course, cognitive and emotional skills educational tools that we use uh, besides the, the, the football uh, and pitch. And of course, last but not least, of course, all the conditioning work, strength and, uh, and uh, everything else. This is something I, I, I will not d discuss because it's not my, my job. So I'm not, I don't talk uh, about something I don't know. Um, but I want to go deep in the in the different in the different points. So I want to start with the game model, and I I describe the, the game model as the whole set of individual and collective behavior during the different moments of the game. So a game model is not a system, is not a system of play, but as I said, a set of collective behavior. Um, which the players have to perform in every single moment of the game. And then mm, this definition, uh, which is, uh, it must be clear, understandable and engaging for the players. They should perceive it as a playing environment where to develop their own learning process. Uh, what does it mean? We know that game models can be built to, um, to, to, to succeed, to achieve different things. Um, for example, in a first team, at first team level, a game model uh, must be built to, to achieve results in a short term. Uh, I have to have a game model to win games. Uh, as a youth level, mm, the game model, yes, of course, we, we all want to win games, but uh, this has to be primarily uh, something that helps the players in their own development. So my, my target can't be to win the next game. My target, as I said before, has to be uh, to develop the qualities of my players. And why I, I said that must be clear and understandable and engaging. Clear, uh, it goes without saying, must be clear because the players have to uh, have it clear in their mind uh, in every single session and every, every single game clear to themselves and, and in relationship with, the, with their, with their uh, pairs, with their teammates. Understandable. And this is, a, <clears throat> is one of my, my priority as a coach, our priority. We have to be able to transfer our message to the players because they, if, they, if we want them to have it clear in their mind, uh, we have to, sh to, to, to make sure that we are understandable. We, they, they understand what we, we offer them. Engaging. Uh, because, of course, this is the, the most important part for me, because I can't offer a game model to my players uh, that 
don't doesn't doesn't mm, involve them emotionally. Uh, for example, in my specific case, uh, I have the privilege to coach players with great quality, and uh, I can't ask them to give the ball away or to uh, chase people around the pitch. Uh, I have to convince them and to offer them a game model where they can feel uh, protagonists, uh, they can feel that they, they dominate the game. Uh, this is the only way, in my, in my opinion, to, to have the players that will put every single uh, energy in the sessions and in the game. Uh, which are the, the base and the pillars and the keys of this game model for AS Roma? Uh, so basically we want to build a game model where <clears throat> the, the, the players, the, the team dominate the game. So how? Of course, the first thing is by playing out from the back. I'm sure that I can't achieve what I said before if I ask my goalkeeper to kick a long ball to the strikers and waiting for the second ball, hope for um, something to happen. I have to convince them that we have to start to dominate from the back, to play out from the back, uh, because this is something that give, gives uh, self-esteem to the players uh, and to the team. So uh, I think that this is probably the, 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 the base of this idea. Uh, dominate the core of the field I think uh, that as much as the team can play inside inside the field, I mean, not in the center, but inside. So not playing uh, wide, not playing mm, near the touch lines, but try always to keep the ball inside. Uh, this is, of course, is a bit more difficult because it's a bit more risky, but it pays off uh, when all the players understand this. And then, of course, afterward, we will uh, see uh, in the videos and, of course, how to, to and how we coach this principle. Vertical possession uh, is, strictly, is strictly related to, to the, pre the previous principle. Uh, this means that possession itself uh, is useful if it's not um, aimed to to touch uh, to sorry to to cut opponent defensive lines. So this is why I don't like, for example, when my back four move the ball uh, from one side to the other. I don't think is the is the right way to dominate the game. This is the only way to to give the opponent the chance to regroup and to and to press. So. Uh, one of these uh, principles is, for example, my center backs have to um, try to play uh, ball, balls, um, vertical balls to the to the set, to the midfielders. Not try to play wide because, as I said before, it's, it's too easy for the opponent to to give pressure. The pace of the game. Uh, the pace is is uh, is paramount in in a football uh, in a football match because uh, again the players have to understand where and when they have to keep they can keep the ball and where and when they have to move it quickly so they understand that different situation require different behaviors in terms of uh, keeping the ball or giving or, or passing the ball. This was, of course, uh, about possession. Then uh, the game model have also, has also um, some, some uh, features uh, with regards to defensive, defensive moments. In, uh, in this case, are high pressure against the opposition build-up. So anything, any single team uh, at S Roma, starting from mm, the younger ages, I mean, when we start to play 11, so uh, under 12 to, to under 19, there will be no, no teams. Uh, you will never see one team waiting in their own half for the opponent to, to build. Uh, we try always to press high the, po the position build up because we think that to win the ball higher on the pitch is something that uh, is not only useful 
uh, is not only effective, but again, is a message that you give to the opponents. So we are here to dominate the game. We are here because we want we we want to have the ball, and uh, this is one of these uh, main principles defensively, and defending the central area, central area of the pitch. We think, and I think too, that in this, the same way I want my team to play inside, I want to force the opponent to play wide, because I think that when the ball goes wide, you have always the time to, to build a defensive um, uh, action with more uh, time and, um, and calmness. Transitions. Of course, we all know that uh, in a football match there are four moments, five plus, I mean, the fifth one is uh, our set pieces, but we are not talking about set pieces today. Four, four um, moments, of course, possession, uh, out of possession, and of course the transition. So in a, in a, in a defensive transition, again, we, we, we don't want opponents to to have the um, privilege to play, the time to play, but we try to win it, win the ball back quickly if, when we lose it. Of course, if we lose it higher up on the pitch, we will do something. If we lose it um, in, our, in our half or um, near to our box is a, is a different, uh, different behavior, but st still trying to win it back quickly. And then in the positive, in attacking transition, Retain possession or counter-attack. There is a question mark because it's not always the same behavior. Of course, it depends on, on different, on different uh, things. But the players will, will learn how to read different situations and, um, and, and behave accordingly. But we will come back later on this. Okay, the tactical principles. Uh, which, what, I, what it means, tactical principles are what make my game model works. So are the, mm, the keys of, uh, that can give an identity to my game model. Okay, um, there are many tactical principles, individual, collective, but I want to name just few that can uh, identify uh, the specific, um, pre, uh, the specific, the main ones that we use to, and we try to to learn to teach to to our players. The first one um, I want to, we call it, of course, I try to translate in English, builders and invaders, and I want to show you something later on. Uh, pass, passing to feet. So when, when we build up the play during the possession, the preparation for a, to attack, um, we want them, the players to try to always play to the feet of their teammates, not in the space. The space we use to pass the ball in the space when the, is the last pass, is the killer pass, is a pass that um, send a player or to finish or to uh, deliver a ball in the box or to make an assist but during the build-up the ball has to be delivered on uh, uh, the player's feet. Reading the space and move accordingly. Uh, again this is another pillar of uh, our game model. All our players have to understand where they are, when to move in a space if they have to move, if the, the space is free, if it's not free. So all the players have to understand perfectly the space around them. Uh, because no matter the system, no matter the... I, I, I'm sure about this, I believe in this. Nowadays, the football is all about reading the space and trying to get the ball in a free space um, to to, to make the most out of it. Um, and this is why I think that teams like Atalanta in Italy, for example, they, they are having a lot of success because now they, they, all, they, they play man-to-man -man all over the pitch. So it's difficult for, the opponent, for, the, for, for all the teams that play against Atalanta to find the space and play. 
because there is always someone uh, and then this is why to to find a space is uh, is paramount uh, density in the regaining areas this is another uh, principle of, of principles of ours so we think that especially when we win the ball uh, in a defensive moment when we are in deep in our in our um, half when we win the ball there has to be players there have to be players uh, uh, teammates around the, the player that won the ball back because otherwise the risk is uh, to to get this, this player dispossessed and this is the worst moment because this is uh, in many cases can lead to an opponent uh, in a position opportunity to score positional understanding and interchangeability this is very difficult for me to to spell this interchangeability but I, I hope I, I, I said it in the right way. Um, all our players are uh, taught how to perform also in different positions of the pitch. And inter, inter exchange and change swap position with, with their teammates. And this is very important because it doesn't mean that we want to teach a striker, for example, to play as a center back. No, it's not that. Mm, it's not like that. Uh, there are specific roles and position, but it's a bit different. So we think, and I think too as well, that all the players has have to know exactly what to do in different areas of the pitch if happens that they 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 found themselves there. But also, it means. And this is very strictly related to the, the concept of builders and invaders that we will we are gonna uh, watch later. Um, it's not anymore about systems. So uh, center back must be center back, uh, full back must play as full back. There are moments in the game where a full back um, can find himself in the middle of the pitch, and uh, as long as he he is occupying the right space is is fine for us is fine for me um so a fullback doesn't have just to 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 see the the sideline beside him no he can play also inside the, inside the field and probably is one of the key of uh, our game model so okay uh, here for example if we uh, if we want to to go, uh, Andres, is everything okay right now? Andres? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Was it okay until now? So I mean, everything was clear. Yeah, yeah, everything was clear. Perfect. Okay, I will I already, show. I, I will put the link on of the videos on the, the okay. chat. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna show these four, or five very short video clips. There, which are related to what I'm, I told so far. And then if someone has some um, questions, we can, we can, otherwise we can, uh, we can uh, keep going. Okay. So the first, the first clip, I called it builders and invaders is the video number one. Can can we have some uh, uh, hint from the people that if they are they are watching it or or not? Can I go? Yes, yes, you can, Fabrizio. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, the concept of builders and invaders. This is okay. Just an, uh, a, sh a short. Uh, um, introduction all the clips that i'm going to show today are all about my team or from this of last year last season or this season so i'm not going to show things from other teams um, we are talking about this team so i'm, I'm showing all the clips from my team uh, in this clip is very clear the concept of builders and invaders so um what does it mean once again Systems are not that important, in my opinion. 
it's much more important to know where the space is and, or how to move the ball uh, further up on the pitch. How? In this way, for example. Depends also the, um, the behavior of the opponents. But if we go in this, in this clip, we are the, the dark team. Okay. Now, if we want to stop at this point, so at uh, 12, 12 seconds, as you can see, there are four players, but I, I, will, I would add also the goalkeeper, but is not, is not involved at the moment in this uh, specific action. Four players, the, the, the ones with the, with, the yellow, with the yellow circle around, I call them builders. So there, these are the players that are trying to cope with the, the pressure, but is, in this case, there are not that much pressure from the opponent. And as you can see, there are two white, uh, yellow players trying to give, uh, to, sh to, to shadow more than press, maybe a three, because there is another one. And with four of my players, plus the goalkeeper if needed, I think it, we are enough to, to build. All the red players, as you can see, the, red, the, the players with the red circle around, I call them invaders. What does it mean? It means that the players that are not involved in the, in the, in the vicinity of the, of the build-up, they have to move and try to invade the space of the, of the position, like exactly in the, in the picture that you are watching, because if we want to dominate the game, we have to first bring players up in between the lines, between the opponent um, players, and then bring the, play, the, the ball there, make the ball arrive there. So I want to make this clip going forward. It's a bit slow. Wait a second, I'm going to back, I'm going back. I hope everyone is, is watching from his own YouTube channel. Eh? The connection is not perfect, okay. As you can see, the four builders are coping with, uh, with the possession, are keeping possessions, and the other players are trying to occupy the space in the opponent half. Here, for example, at uh, minute uh, second 36, you can see already something about what I was saying before about um, occupying the right space and position, swapping position, because the player, this number 11, that is receiving the ball uh, close to the, near the touchline, is a winger. And the player up, further up on the pitch, near the two yellow players, is a fullback. So they have swapped position, uh, but again, I'm not, I, 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 I'm happy with that, as long as the, they occupy the space in, in the in a clever manner. Then we here we lose the ball, but the idea was was clear. Okay, now here uh, I want to show what I was mean. Uh, I, I was meant. Bef um, I meant before with regards to passing the ball on uh, players' feet during during the build up, and again. Here you can see the, the idea of builders and invaders. So I want this clip flow and uh, of course here the, the goalkeeper is very, is very much involved in the build up. Here the pressure is much, um, 
intense from the opponent, but the players have the the confidence to to keep the ball, to to retain the ball, and try to to cope with the opponent pressure until they find the right space to play, to play forward. These two players playing wide, the number five, and they are the two center backs. And our fullbacks are very high on the pitch because, again, I want them to try and play vertically, not playing square passes, which give the, the opponent to the, the chance to, to press. Again, we start again, then go keeper with good, good feet. We lose the ball, we win it back, and then, hope players between the lines, and then, of course, in this moment, we try to to score. This clip, this number video number three is a, um, just a short one to, to show what I was saying before with regards to players try, uh, moving to find the right space to receive. This is from last year, as you can see, because the center backs have to stay out from the, the penalty box. But it's easy to see now when the player with the ball is facing forward. Now, all the players try to move to find a space in a, in a free area. Then, of course, the, the choice can be uh, better, but is the, me the meaning of the, the principle was clear. This is what uh, I was saying with regards to supporting the player who, have the, who has won the ball, the ball back. Uh, my players are the, the ones with the orange shirt. In this moment, as you can see, all the players try to support the player that have won the ball and try to keep it until they find a way to, to get out from the pressure. And this is possible only if all the players join the player that have won the ball back. And this, again, uh, one more clip about uh, positional understanding. And this is something I want to show and I want to explain better. The player that is now reaching the ball, this is a come, uh, a, an outcome from a, from a corner kick for us. Uh, this player that is running uh, to the ball is a right winger. But what is important is what he's doing now. So he's passing the ball back to the goalkeeper and now he's moving to receive the ball from the goalkeeper exactly as what the center backs do in, in the same situation. So he learned what he has to do uh, in, in, in the same situation, um, even if uh, he's not a center back. So he's a right winger, but he's doing something that normally, usually is made by the center backs. And this is possible only because when we train, we train always in a, a real game scenario. And this is something we, we can talk later when we talk about coaching methodology. Okay. Right. Uh, I going back to the presentation. Andre? Yes. Give me, a, give me a sign. Was it uh, everything uh, clear? Because of course I don't have feedback. So is uh, I'm I'm talking, but without without the uh, without the feedback. So was it everything okay? Yeah, everything was okay. All um, right. Everyone. Um, some yeah. Some okay. Are, are here 
saying that everything was ok, so alguma Good. dúvida, coloquem, coloquem, estejam à vontade, tá bom pessoal? Vão colocando dúvidas, vão colocando questões. Uh, we have here a question from Gabriel. Um, ok. Are you seeing in the, the chat? Uh, wait Gabriel. a second, wait a second. I'm trying to open the, the chat. He's saying that your contact context uh, is, okay. is good and, uh, and good technical players. But in the context of mm. less technical and more physical players, how the coach engage them with the game model? Right. Uh, okay. Of course, in a club like Roma, like S Roma, but I think this is probably normal also in other kind of clubs, uh, the players, so the, the scouting, let's say, they, I, uh, when the, 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 the scouting department try to identify players, uh, they, they bring players that suits, suits, suits the, 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 the fits the game model. So in this, in this regard, it's much easier because, of course, as Roma, for example, uh, try always to, to bring players, young players with the uh, technical qualities, good technical qualities. They are, we are not that interested in uh, physical, uh, player, physical uh, players, but more about uh, intelligent players and uh, technically good players, players with quality. But... Uh, you say how we can code, we, we can engage a game model, uh, we, we can build a game model with less technical players. Uh, my answer is uh, if I marry a nice, a nice girl, I don't need her to, to dress well. If my wife is not that nice, why to force, for her, force her to to dress bad. So what I want to say that the game model is something that is, is created to allow the players to express themselves. Even if they are not so that good technically, they can still learn how to move, to receive. If I'm not that good technically, and, uh, but I can learn how to find the space to receive the ball and to, um, to be more free to receive the ball and play, this is something that can help me, even if I'm not that good technically, rather than staying always, uh, being always uh, close to the opponent. So uh, somehow it's uh, even better to, to build a game model, this kind of game model, if you are not, if, you are, if your plays are not that good. So uh, I don't think that this is a game model built because I have, we have good players. But the good players, of course, made it a bit simple. But I think we have, as a coaches, um, our task is to try to create the right game model for, for our players. Um, I still think that with the different kind of players we have to, we, we can, we can do and we can build this kind of uh, game model. I don't know if I was uh, clear. Fabrizio, we have here a couple of more questions. Okay. Yes. Um, um, so uh, we have here a question from, from David. He's asking yeah. if the invaders are never builders. Uh, no, uh, um, the concept of builders and inv invaders is not that uh, there are players that I define builders and others uh, are inv invaders. The number of builders and invaders depends very much on the position pressure. Uh, the, mm, I, I like to say that the more, the, the more is the pressure from the opponent, the more are the builders. Because we, you need more players to, to keep the ball. If the opponents don't give pressure. I can even have two builders, just two, plus the goalkeeper, because the opponent don't give pressure, so I need to bring players higher on the pitch. So there are not always the same, numbers, same number of builders and invaders. It depends on the opponent behavior. The more is the pressure, the more builders I need, more builders I need. Um, and then 
Is this something set on your game model or depending on your game strategy of your game? Okay, Here, exactly. I, I, I think I answered already to this, I replied to this question. In relation to the opponent, it's not something that you prepare before, it's not part of the game plan, but it's part of the adapt, adaptation that the players uh, do during the game. The, the, if there are, again, there are many players, the opponent players that press, I need more builders. Otherwise, I need mm, few builders and all inv become invaders. Okay, we have here, we have here a, a question from Willy. Um, My friend Willy. Yeah, uh, he's asking, uh, is there a thread throughout the youth phase of uh, Roma of how you de develop young players? And is the game model similar uh, with the young players uh, from 11 or 12 years old up to 16 and 17 years old? I would say that uh, starting, of course, since uh, the, the age level where, where we start to play 11, uh, 11 against 11, which I think is starting from 12 years old, all the teams play yeah, at AS Roma with the same principles, same uh, game model. Again, once again, this doesn't mean that we have the same system. Sometimes we play with four, uh, no, always four at the back, can be 4 2 3 1, 4 3 3, 4 3 1 2. This doesn't matter, to be honest. It is again, it's more about the game model, it's more about principles, it's more about the idea how to, um, to, to perform, and how to, um, what the behavior to keep during the, the, the game. And this is something that you can see even in the younger ages, because when you, when you see, sometimes I, I stop uh, at the end of my session to watch this a nine or 10 years old players uh, training in a, in a small pitch. And even if they play seven against the, seven uh, V seven, you can see already the idea, uh, which is move the ball and move in a space, uh, try to keep the ball, uh, try to dribble the ball, always trying to make the most out of the possession. And uh, uh, this is something that lead the players, the young players to uh, the stage where when I have the chance to, to, to coach them, of course, I'm uh, lucky because I have already players that have grown with, uh, with this idea. Okay, Fabrizio, we will, um, we all, we have here a lot of, a lot of questions, but, uh, yeah. uh, we have to select some of those because there's, um, we need to continue and then, yeah. We'll okay. Have, uh, but anyway, what uh, I want to say now, if, uh, if you agree, yeah. uh, whatever or whatever question I can't, we don't have the time to reply. If you want to leave my contact, uh, afterwards, my, um, email address, I would, I yeah. would be very, okay. very happy to, to, to reply afterwards. Okay. Okay. So I just one more um, video related to this uh, concept, which is this video uh, number five, this, if we can go back to, to the video clips. So this positional understanding, I call it, if I, I can give the time to, to open the, the video clip. This is again, is related to what I was saying before with regards to builders, invaders, but above all to the play, uh, with the players um, that understand the space, read the space and move. So if we go with this clip, we have an, another build up from the back. As you can see, the center backs don't play the ball in a wide areas, but try always to, as I said before, to dominate the core of the pitch. So we play inside because I think that it is the best way to, to dominate the game. Now the players with the yellow circle, left back and right back, right full back and left full back. Why I put this yellow circles? Because I want you to, uh, to watch at the end of this action, this play, 
where their, uh, these two players will be. There is no pressure here. So, for example, no pressure, two builders. Bit more pressure, one more builder. But now, okay, we open the space. And there was also, uh, before I read uh, an answer, a question, what we do when we try to open the space? This is exactly what happened. So a player that received the ball between the lines have to bring the ball forward. Okay. Now is the 36th second. Again, the two fullbacks look their position. Now they have become like midfielders. So it's not important the position. So fullback can become midfielders, like in this situation. The fullback, left fullback and right fullback, uh, have realized that the wide areas were, were, were uh, already occupied but by some of their teammates and they have um, and they moved in a in a different position in the right position this is another uh, this is what i was uh, meaning when i said about when i told about uh, positional understanding okay going back i go back to the presentation Okay. Okay. Can I go forward, Andre? Yes, you can. Okay. Yes. So, uh, I uh, I just show some some of not of course not everything but just some hints some uh, uh, short moments of what I was saying about game model. Now I want to talk about the coaching structure, uh, which is based by three main points. Tactical periodization, uh, which I, th I know that, especially in Portugal, per period uh, periodization is, is uh, very much um, rated in, the, in terms of coaching. Then the contents of the sessions and extra session activities. Uh, tactical periodization. Uh, I don't think that periodization in youth at youth level uh, must be applied to the physical part okay so I only uh, talk about tactical periodization so something related to the to the um, tactics and the game because for example at this age we are not um, very much uh, worried about uh, not the physical conditions of course we are worried about this but we don't um, different. We don't make difference in terms of intensity of the sessions, starting from Tuesday to Saturday, because it's not. Um, to, we don't think that we have to modulate this uh, idea. Like, for example, in a first team, when you have to prepare the game, we don't work to prepare the next game. We work to prepare the players. So I'm, for example, Tuesday, the session, the first session of the, 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 the week in Tuesday can be in terms of intensity, exactly the same uh, Saturday morning, the day before the game. The contents of the session, and of course here, uh, now I'm gonna a bit more deeper in the, in the details, and extra session activities. But I wanna start with the structure of uh, the week. Uh, as you can see here, I work in this way. Monday usually is dedicated to re uh, rest because we played on Sunday or extra session activities. What are extra session activities? Are all, this, uh, all the activity, activities that we used to, to do with players that have played, haven't played the, the game before or they have played less or some players that need extra sessions to, um, to work individually, maybe more individually with the, with the different coaches uh, that, who are 
um, dedicated to technical improvement besides the sessions. Um, Tuesday, I always try to do this. To the first day of the session, the, the week, so Tuesday, for example, I work on possession and uh, defensive transition. Negative transition is defensive transition is the same. Why? Because I think that, and uh, especially uh, here, specifically possession build up from the back. So um, building up from the goalkeeper and defensive transition, because I think that just because I always coach in a real game scenario, I have to take in account that when I build up, I have, uh, there is the chance also to, to lose the ball and I have to cope with it. Wednesday, non-possession and positive transition. So everything related to um, working with the back four, for example, or working as a defensive unit or a collectively, plus uh, attacking transition, because uh, it's the same as before. If I work in, uh, defensively, I have to, of course, I have to hope first to win the ball. And then I have to know, the players have to know what to do when they have won the ball. The day after, so the Thursday, for example, again, possession and defensive transition. In this uh, specific case, so the second day of possession is more about preparing um, to attack, but uh, I, will, uh, I will show more in details later. And negative transition, again. Friday, once again, non-possession, but this, in this case is more about pressing high on the field and attacking transition. Saturday morning, not always, we work on some set pieces, but it's not the, uh, the topic I want to I wanna talk, talk now. Um, the contents, the contents of the sessions are always about individual tactical principles, unit tactical principles, and here for me, I, I want to, to, to uh, underline this unit tactical principles. In my opinion, the only, but this is my opinion, uh, just mine, I think the only moment where we can work on a unit is when we work on the back four. So the movements of the back four uh, with regards to, the, to our principles of defending, so the ball and so on. But I can't work in a possession without all the players because there are no uh, units that are um, disconnected from the others. I think, and this is something I, 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 I used to, to think a lot during my career, I always thought, how can I work on just a unit, just the strikers or the midfielders? Is it not, is impossible in my opinion. Is it, the only thing you can do with a unit is the work with the back four, when we talk about, when it comes to defending. Of course, collective tactical principles and technical tools. But technical tools is something that we can discuss afterwards. Okay. Fabrizio, we yes. have here a question. Yeah, of that, course. Uh, is concerning the, the, the last, last uh, subject that you were talking about. Yeah. Um, and it says that, do you work on things from the previous game? And how quickly would you do this post-match? Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the answer is yes and no. I mean, um, I uh, of course, quickly, uh, yes, of course, because I think that the more, uh, the, the quicker you, you fix something in the player's mind, the better they will, uh, will get it. But uh, I prefer, we prefer to, to develop um, the principles in a long term. Uh, so I'm not working in a week according to what I saw in the previous game. No, uh, this is more about, again, this is more about first team. So I have to fix it, um, fix something that I, I'm afraid it can lead to the same mistake the next game. Here I have to work in a way that I have to fix something that will, won't happen anymore. Uh, if in, uh, in the player uh, behavior. So I have the privilege to, to work uh, more deeply and maybe to 
to have more time for for uh, for myself and for the player itself himself. So I don't feel the need to to fix straight away or to fix uh, something that I happened in the game the game before. Then also we have, we have to understand that, uh, for example, a player that made a mistake the day the, the game uh, the previous game. My question is: I have to ask to myself: Is it something that is uh, going to happen again with this player, or is was something random? So something sometimes we have to un understand if a player that make a mistake uh, is because has this problem or can happen. Sometimes just can happen, even if the player is a. And we know that this player is not going to make the same mistakes again. So we have to um, to be able to 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 see the the, the thing in, a, in in the right way. If I can go oh. forward, or let's, uh, move, on. let's okay. move on. I move on. Uh, okay, space of decisions and space of reactions. This is, in my opinion. Uh, one of the main uh, mm, points in when we come when it um, when it comes to coaching and what does it mean <clears throat> of course in every football game uh, things happen quickly and uh, uh, sometimes uh, we have to mm, understand why something happened there are two two uh, areas uh, where we have we can um, put things that happen in football. Something that we uh, we can do uh, by thinking, by taking taking the th decisions, and these are part. Um, they, they these things go in the space of decisions. Uh, in the space of decisions, uh, there are aware intentions intentions so as a player i can think before in advance uh, what i have to do sometimes and especially this happen in the area of the ball uh, space of reactions and we all know that even even the, especially the best players when they do something you know that you you haven't thought before about what you're doing. So these are unaware intentions. This is something that uh, is always been like that in football, but it's good to know when we come when it comes to coaching because we have to understand that sometimes we coach the decisions, sometimes we coach the reactions. And I think this is something that uh, is very important. So for example, if we go to the video number six, uh, is a short clip that I use to I want to use to um, explain better this this concept. This is another game of ours. There is a build up, and of course here we can see still think about builders and uh, and invaders. So no pressure. As you can see, many builders, but now. I want to I want to talk about something else. Okay, in these moments no pressure every single player with the ball but not only our players even the white players so the opponents are in the space of decisions. So there is time and space to decide what to do. The player with the ball has time and space to decide who to pass the ball. The players in a white shirt, you can see them, they are very uh, well organized defensively. A back four, a line of back four, five midfielders trying to, to shadow, and one striker trying to force our play. We are in the space of decisions. Every single player here can decide what to do. If we go further on the pitch, I can, we can see another principle. This player near the touchline is a, is a, 
is not the fullback, is a midfielder. The fullback is a, is a side near the, the referee. So again, reading the space. Now, this is what I want to talk more. When we stop here, is again, once again, there is a space of reactions. As you can see, the player in the circle is surrounded by three or four white defenders. There is no time here to think. It's all about reaction. Now the, the, the brain is not involved anymore. Now the, um, the nerves, uh, in, in, somehow, the, the perception of, of the colors, of uh, the space is more, more important. All the others are in the space of decisions because the striker here, for example, near the, the penalty spot can decide, I want to attack the back post, I want to attack the near post, I want to attack the, uh, the front, uh, the goal line, the goal uh, mouth. The players uh, coming from a wide area can decide where to attack. Other players can decide. This player at the back can decide to stay in a prevention marking and so on. Of course, this is something, this is not something new in football. This has always happened uh, since the, the first game uh, football match in the history. But it's important to understand this because we have to make a difference when we coach the, player, the players. And uh, during the, the week, we know that we, sometimes we uh, coach the decisions, sometimes we coach the reactions. And then I want to uh, I want to show later what and how I do this. So now this uh, action will go on. Okay. Okay. Sorry, not all right. Just. Okay, uh, is there some, are there some questions, Andrea? Otherwise, uh, I move on with the, the details of the, of the, of the week. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's a, some questions here, but um, some questions that you already, already talked about it. And, okay. uh, and some of those, uh, you already said that there's no such a big importance about, right. about the, um, the physical part. About it. Yep. Okay. Um, and uh, here Fabio is, is asking if uh, that the decisions are without the ball and the reactions are with the ball. Is uh, Fabio asking it? Okay, good question. Uh, almost of the time, yes. Uh, the most of the time, yes, but not always. Think about uh, reaction when we, when uh, um, you you lose the ball, and we will watch it later. So we are attacking, we lose the ball, and we have to react quickly to win it back. So also in that, that moment is about reaction, not only uh, when we have the ball. So we lost the ball, transitions, all transition, the first four or five seconds after uh, winning or losing the ball, in my opinion, we can we can uh, place this situation in the reaction. So in uh, in the space of reactions, uh, maybe in a different rate. Maybe thirty percent is uh, is decision, seventy percent is uh, is uh, reaction. But still, we are in a gray area. There are other moments of the game where we are we know that we are in a decision in a space of decisions and totally in a space of reaction. But yeah, uh, good question. I hope uh, I, I was clear in the in the answer. May oh, I move have, on? Ah, yeah, okay. Sorry, Fabrizio. No, no. Let, uh, let me just uh, um, update here some questions because uh, yes. there's a lot of questions uh, going on. Uh, Guilherme is asking, how do you assure the balance of the team when you're attacking? Uh, wait a second. I, I want to go back to the, the question. Which, uh, can you can you re repeat again uh, 
Yeah, no problem. Uh, the question. Guilherme, Guilherme is asking, how do you assure the balance of the team when you are attacking? Right, okay. I think that the more invaders you have, means that you are forcing the opponents to retreat or you put invaders, for example, more, many invaders, because already the, 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 the position has already decided to sit back waiting for you. Uh, so the balance in terms of the def defensive moment, you can grant the defensive balance exactly in the way that I was saying before. So I lose the ball just because I have many players when I lose the ball up there, my players don't have to retreat. They have to uh, win it back straight away. So defend forward and not going back, leaving the space the, to the opponent to, to play. Then there are other situations where for any reason uh, your uh, uh, defending, defensive transition doesn't work, then sometimes we have accept the two against two at the back, for example. It's not a big issue for, a, for, a, for us because it's part of the player's uh, development. Sometimes our center backs, uh, they have to cope with a, a numerical uh, disadvantage or numerical uh, parity. And it's something that is part of their development. So I'm not that worried about this. And we use a lot, by the way, this uh, prevention marking. So um, my players at the back make sure that uh, they are marking uh, in advance the, the players that have remained, the opponent that have remained uh, up on the field. And again, the balance is uh, uh, granted by the reaction of the players once, once uh, we lose the ball. Uh, and in this regard, with this regard, I like to say something that uh, I heard from, uh, from uh, an Italian coach who is, uh, of course, much, uh, made much experienced, but he said something that I liked. When we defend, in, when we attack in this way with uh, invaders, when we lose the ball, we have to accept to defend uh, mm, not uh, in an unorganized defense, defend, defending, not very organized. It's all about reacting. It's not about having the right, uh, being in the right position. It's all about uh, reacting quickly. Uh, you don't have the privilege to have the players in the right position in that moment. So I think this is the only way to, to prevent the opponent to, to, to hurt you, to, to damage you when you lose the ball. Okay. Okay. Guilherme, the... Esclarecido? Yes. <laughs> Guilherme, Guilherme is saying thank you. So, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Just um, another quick question, but this one, yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's uh, with a quick answer. Um, yeah. Tomas is, is asking if the um, the um, the weak plan that you have uh, can be changed. For example, if in the last game um, the team doesn't work well without the ball, uh, and if and if that moment will be um, will you have an extra work on on that moment during? The week after? No. I mean, uh, I, I think, again, once again, at the youth age, youth level, you have, to, uh, you have to know that you're not fixing something, you, have, you are developing players. Um, I mean, if I, I have in my week plan that on Wednesday, I'm working with the back four, with the back line, and I'm not doing on Tuesday, one day before, just because maybe the back line, the back four didn't work well uh, the, the game before, if you know what I mean. So my, mm, my plan doesn't change with regard to, to the outcome of the previous game. Uh, I have to make sure that these problems or this behavior, bad behavior, um, don't happen 
maybe in, in the medium term. In the, so I have to, to assess the team, uh, not every single game, but uh, in, a, in, a, in a medium term. Because I think this is why, what we have to do with the, with the players. I have to, but not only with the team, but with the players individually. Um, when I, I assess the player or with the, with the staff or the club, we assess, uh, we assess the, the, play, the development of the player. Uh, we don't say, we don't like to say, ah, now uh, this player was, uh, wasn't that good with uh, his right footed uh, or after, how, how it works with his uh, right foot uh, after two months. No, we, at, at the end of the, mm, the, the, the year, we have to say, is this player, has this player improved as a player? Then I'm not really you know, interested if a player uh, have improved, has improved uh, because now he's uh, right-footed and play a bit better with his left. I don't think is the is the right way to to mean uh, development or to mean improvement. I have to judge. The player has improved as a player at the end of the season. If the answer is yes, okay. I, I, we think I think that we we did a good job. If the answer is no. We have to ask ourselves why. Can I move on? Yep. Okay. Okay. We have so, some questions, uh, but we will do it. Uh, okay. We can. Okay? Yeah. No problem. I want to go quickly with uh, the contents of the sessions. So the day one, I said uh, we work on possession. So build up. Uh, I go a bit on the details. So build up from the back. And of course, trying to release the pressure from the opponents. So every time I work with the team uh, in a in a build-up from the back, always in a in a real game scenario, and always with the the opponents trying to win it, try to give a high pressure because I want to put pressure on my my players. Otherwise, they if they don't feel this pressure, uh, they are not. In my opinion, they are not coping with the, with the real uh, um, situation, with the real game. Playing through the lines, so as I said, we try to uh, play in a way that cut the opponent's uh, pressure. Creating an occupying space is to receive. We, we, we saw this uh, principle before in the clips again. Find a free, free player behind the line of pressure because, of course, when we build up our target is not, uh, can't be the goal, the opponent goal, has to be trying to find a free player uh, who can turn and then from that moment uh, on, it starts a different, a different uh, phase of the game. And coping with this possession in zone one. Zone one, we, we call zone one the first third of the pitch. So the, 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 the third where we, we are building up. So again, if we are dispossessed, we have to cope with it. And now we, uh, we, we will see um, some clips related to, to this. Okay. Day two, working on defending principles, uh, especially with uh, back four. So it's not always, but uh, often I work with the, with the back four. Uh, for the other player, the other position, we work on shielding and interception, midfielder and attacker, man marking, uh, because we have to uh, teach, all the players have to, to learn how to mark a uh, man. Positive transition in deep areas. So what I have to do if uh, we, I want the ball, we want the ball um, a bit deeper uh, in the, on the field. And uh, related to this, what I have to do, uh, I have two choices. I can retain possession or try to counterattack quickly. And again, this uh, is something that is related to the real scenario. I can't teach this, uh, I can't coach this without a real uh, game scenario. The th day three, we work again on possession. And 
more spe specifically on preparation to attack, creating finishing opportunities, and of course, trying to unbalance the opponent defense, changing the point of attack, which is another key in, uh, in our principles, attract the opponent uh, defensive uh, uh, players, and then trying to attack the, by changing the point. And on the ne neg negative transition, so a defensive transition, trying to re-aggress, uh, re-aggression, so winning the ball back quickly, or, and, or, slowing the opponent's counter-attack. Inverted pressing, inverted pressing uh, is the translation of a, of a principle that uh, we, we have, which means, is simple, uh, when, uh, when, if, the after five, six seconds, which are, as we all know, the seconds, the transition moment, if we win the ball uh, in those five, six seconds, uh, we have to try to, to, um, to exploit the situation. Otherwise, we have to run backwards and try to recreate and regroup and defend, uh, try start a second defensive action deeper on the field. And as I said before, we, we try to uh, um, help the, our center, our defend, defenders, especially the center backs that have remained at the back, to cope with a numerical disadvantage at the back. Because sometimes the opponent can uh, avoid, release our pressure, because it can happen, of course, and our defenders have to be uh, ready to cope with this moment. Day four, we work on high pressing. So how to force the opponent, uh, the position to, um, to give the ball away cheaply or win it back. So winning the ball high up or, and or shielding the core of the pitch. As I said before, when we orient and force the, the position build up, we try always to make them play in a wide area, not, uh, cut our defensive uh, line. And of course, if we win the ball in this moment, we have to, as I said before, to um, attack, to, to, to try to exploit quickly, especially by keeping the ball in the center of the field. Because uh, when, when the, the, the defensive, uh, uh, when the, the opponents are building up, they usually they're open. So we don't want our players to move the ball in a wide area when we win the ball. So, and we can do it by moving the ball quickly without keeping it. So in our principle, one of the, our principle is the player who won the ball have to move it quickly. Don't, uh, if possible, if he, if he keep it, then he will, uh, uh, we can't exploit the situation like, like we, we want. If we can't uh, go and try to finish straight away, we have to rebuild a finishing opportunity. So we have to try and read the situation and say, we can't exploit straight away the chance, but we have to keep the ball and try to build a, a second opportunity. This fifth day are about, uh, is about set pieces, but I'm not going to talk about set pieces. Uh, now I want to talk more about how uh, I build a session and the, um, the idea behind, behind uh, a coaching, the coaching structure or um, the drill or what I'm, I do usually. So uh, I always, as I said, I always work in a real game scenario as much as I can. Sometimes it is possible because maybe you have a set of 20 um, players plus the goalkeepers but most of the times you you don't have this uh, number of players for many reasons but this doesn't mean that you have to depauperate uh, the the session you can still work in a real game scenario even if you're not uh, in the in the right space or with the right number of players but in this moment so you can split the, the, um, the, the session, not split the session, but you, we can um, split the, the, the drills in two areas. 
One, I call it situational bottom-up. And this is the English definition of this uh, principle. In the bottom-up approach, we start with the basic situation. We have in mind the final outcome of this, this situation. And we build a step-by-step -step process in which the players reach the top after having rehearsed and achieved all the intermediate steps. What does it mean? That uh, I don't, I'm not working in this situation uh, with uh, maybe the whole space or, uh, so this, this situation lacks something. Maybe it can lack some players in some positions or maybe there are some uh, rules or restrictions, not too many of course, still, the situation is clear. Still, the target of my drill is clear, but is not exactly the real game scenario. In this case, I'm coaching the situation. This, in this case, the situation is clear for the players. It's clear and it's clear when this situation will, will happen. And I want to give an example. This video, if we go to the video number seven, in this situation, for, exa for example, we are working with the, with the team with a few players, so not all the players, because it can happen sometimes, and in a small pitch, just because I have not that many players, not, not a big number of players, the right number of players, I'm trying to work on a principle without, um, I, I, I miss something, I lack something in this situation, but I'm still working on a principle, which is building up from the back, with the center backs that try to play between the lines, try to play vertically, just because they don't have the full backs on their sides. So the, the setup of this session, the, the, the structure is the goalkeeper, now is not uh, visible. There are two center backs, midfielders, and a player that play more high on the field against opponent that try to press. In this situation, I'm not working in the right space, in the right, uh, uh, with the right size of the field, but still I can do something for, uh, for the players. Like you can see now, the se especially this center back here, the right center back, which usually is, uh, is uh, used to play always wide. In this situation, I'm trying to force the player under pressure to always try to feed the players in the midfield. I know that is not exactly real, realistic, but still I have, I give a direction, I give a, a target. I'm not just playing for the sake of it. So all the players in this situation have um, a, a, a a target to, to, to achieve. The orange players try to win the ball high. And now, once the ball is out from the, from the pressure, we try to keep it for a, for a while just to release the pressure, but then the drill. Also the goalkeeper has the same, the same meaning. And that's it. So this is a bottom up. So it means that it's not a real game scenario, but still there are principles. In this uh, clip, this, uh, this video number eight, I call it hexagonal possession. We play a possession inside a, an hexagonal space with players inside this space, players outside the space, and two, in this case, two players with a different shirt, white in this situation, and these two players play always with the team in possession. The, the target of the team in possession is to try and play 
as much as they can with the two players in the middle. This is not related to the real space. This is not a real game scenario. So it's a bottom-up uh, situation. So the bottom is the target of the, uh, the idea behind the drill, which is don't play horizontally, don't play square, don't play around, but just but try to always to, to feed the players inside, which is a principle that I want from, from my team. I know that is not so realistic, but still there is an, a, a principle inside. So I want to show a few seconds. Every player, if, he, if possible, if he can, is always aim, aiming the center of the, of the field, the cent where the two players are uh, trying to, to get the ball. And this is also a very good situation to, play, to coach what I was saying before. This is the space of reactions, not space of decisions. There is no time to decide. It's only time to react. I have to react to the opponent who is trying to, to press me. Uh, the position I have to perceive more than to see my, my teammates in the middle. So this is about reactions. Going back to the presentation, to the slides, I hope it was quite, quite clear. I hope. I want to, okay. So these two situations are related to the bottom-up situation. The most important, in my opinion, and of course, in the opinion of, uh, of our um, guidelines at S Roma, is the situational top-down approach. In this top-down approach, we create the real game scenario. Real game scenario doesn't mean always 11 against 11. Eh? Uh, this has to be clear. The players get the information they need to solve the situations from the game itself. We correct or reinforce the behavior of our players as the situations happen in the game. What does it mean? Uh, in football, we all know that we can't predict when something will happen. We can't predict it. But we can learn, and we have to teach this to the players, the players can learn how to react in the right way when something happens. So there, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's different. So we don't know what can happen, but we know together how to react when something happens. And this is why is it so important to, to play, to, um, to to train in the real game scenario. For example, in this video number nine, if we go to video number nine, we can see a typical coaching session where I coach the build up from the back. The game, so the space is real. The number of players is quite real because I have almost of the players that just miss one. And the players, the, po the positions, the, the, the white players, are not in the right number, but they are behaving in the right, uh, in the real uh, way. And if we lose the ball, if they win the ball, they have to score. So uh, again, the idea is to play inside, to play in the core of the, of the pitch and try to release the pressure. So the target for the blue player is to, is to avoid and to cut the first line of pressing. The same situation, this is what is important for me to show, this is the same, exactly the same uh, uh, session, just maybe after one minute. We start again. The white press, the blue try to avoid. Now, okay, at second number 15, 15 second, this player, my, the player with the, uh, the blue player, uh, had a bad touch. He should open 
he should receive the ball and and uh, moved forward because the space is forward but he, he he missed the control and the ball went back in this moment we lost the ball the blue lost lose the ball now uh, you can see the reaction of the blue which is what i i want in this moment so i'm not only coaching the build up i coach the reaction after the the losing of the ball in this situation and i i come back now with the the, the question of uh, of our colleague before this is where the ball has been lost this is space of reactions the player for example to the opposite side so the the right fullback in this case the blue is in the space of decisions the player the center back is in the space of decision so he can decide where is the he can see where is the opponent he can decide now i'm marking him the the fullback decides to realign with the, with the, with the his teammates and so on but here is space of reactions and you have to react quickly and now the blue players react well they press they win the ball back and straight away they come out from from the pressure so this is real real game scenario this is another situation of real game scenario once again the number of players is not real but the space is real the target is real and above all we can't predict when something happens so in this situation for example i'm trying to coach uh, how to react when we lose the ball in the in the final third of the opponent how can i do that for example uh, we are eight um, blue players against six white players a back four plus two center backs there is one goalkeeper in the in the defensive uh, of defensive team and there is another um, goal empty goal in the halfway line on the halfway line so the the rules of this uh, um, drill are simple the blue players have to try and score that's it with the, our principles of course the white players when they win the ball they have they can kick the ball straight away in the empty goal to score just because there is no goalkeeper the blue players must win the, try to uh, press and win the ball straight away when they lose it and now i want to show the good thing is that in this rail game scenarios i can coach my the, the target of the of the session but i can still uh, focus also on the defender's behavior if they are working well maybe your uh, your colleague uh, your assistant can can uh, focus more on one thing than another maybe he can focus on the on the defend defenders but still i work on all the everything can happen in football for example in this situation the white players are defending well the blue are not losing the ball so the target of my drill didn't happen but it doesn't matter they're still working now we start again now i'm trying to explain something i don't know to the players but i can move a bit further and we start again the action start again in this situation for example the blue players and to lose the ball the white players didn't kick the ball in the empty goal but still they do what they want them to do in that situation they win the ball and they try to release the pressure from the blues by moving the ball quickly in the right situation with confidence and they end up to move the ball forward to an empty to a free player even if they didn't reach the target which was 
to score in the empty goal, who cares? They did something uh, good. So this is why it's important to, in my opinion, to, to train and to coach the real, the real, uh, the real game, the real, uh, in the real scenario. Now I go back to the... to the presentation. Okay. Okay, technical tools. Oh, if there are, if there are some questions on this, uh, Andres, Andre, otherwise I move uh, to, the, to the technical tools. Hello? Andre? Andre? I can't hear. Hello? Hello, Fabrizio. Ah, Andre. I, oh, I, no sorry. problem. I had a problem with the, um, with the, the internet. Ah, okay. So, sorry. no problem. The important thing I didn't tell, uh, I didn't speak two hours for, <laughs> for anyone. No, no, no. Was it clear? No, I had a problem with my internet here ah, okay. at home, okay? Okay. No, I was saying if there is someone who wants to, to ask some questions, otherwise uh, I, I, I move on. Let me know. Uh, questions? Alguma questão? Some questions uh, for Fabrizio? I can read something, but is a session Let me think here. Okay. Uh, can I can I answer to Piso, who is uh, from Scotland, good friend? Can I ask? Can I yes, answer? No problem. No problem. Okay. Just maybe it can be interesting because uh, this leads to the last part of my presentation. He said, would you do individual sessions, for example, if a wide player crossing has been poor for a number of weeks? Uh, do you, as a club, do much individual? Piso, if you agree, is the next part of the, of, the, of the presentation. Okay, so I can answer to you while I'm answering to everyone. Okay. So, can I move on or do you want me to answer some questions, uh, Andre? Uh yeah, you can move on. You can move on, and then after after we can uh, okay. we can okay. um, we can continue with questions. And in in the end of the session, if right. uh, someone wants to to hear that that question to be answered, they can ask again. Okay. Perfect. If okay. it's everything okay with everyone, tudo bem. Pessoal, se houver alguma pergunta que queiram fazer, uh, vamos continuar para não para não terminarmos muito tarde. E no final, uh, alguma questão que sintam que é mesmo que estava mesmo de, ser, de ver respondida. Uh, façam a questão no chat que, que eu, eu faço chegar também ao Fabrício e tiramos essa dúvida no momento, ok? Anyway, we almost finished. I almost finished. So, I, I want to move to the technical tools. Uh, as I said, uh, we can use um, the time of the session to work technically, but in this uh, two hours time during the week, my idea is to work technically always not in a game, a real game scenario, but still with drills that involve all the players. Uh, I want to make an example. The, 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 the famous and the typical rondos that I think every one of us uh, do in the sessions, like you can see, can you see the video number? Can you watch the video number, number, number with number? 12, I put a clip of a simple situation. Two, the players are split in two groups. It's like a six against two or can be a five against two, whatever. Or seven against three, depends on how, play, how many players we have. In a small, small area, small box, this is something I do every single session 
every single session, uh, like uh, activation, 15 minutes, where I put these two boxes, and me and my assistant, we work on this. All the players just do this, to touch. They have to keep the ball, retain the ball. Again, here I'm coaching. Technical abilities, because they are doing, they are playing in a, with opponents, so it's not something they do disconnected with the, with the reality. And also I'm coaching, I'm coaching exactly the space of reaction as before. Okay, this is my idea to work technically in, a, in the space we're, of we're the... We're not seeing the videos, Fabrizio. No, We're sorry. not seeing the videos, yeah, yeah. Uh, is the number 12. Okay. Can you see the video number 12? Let me just... Is it okay? Andre? You cannot show, you're not showing the video. Wait a second. Uh, okay, okay, because I stopped the, sh the sharing. Sorry, yeah, my fault. No problem, my no fault. problem. No problem. I'm not okay. Okay, sorry Let's, guys. Sorry. Disculpe, you have a failure. Disculpe, disculpe, disculpe. <laughs> so these two rondos is what I mean to work technically. Very simple. Two situations, two boxes, very uh, small, where there is a six against two, for example. Two players in the middle with a with the shirt on their hands. This is again, it's all about perceiving, it's all about reactions, not about actions. Unfortunately, the connection is a, is a bit slow, this moment. Doesn't help, but the, the, the colleagues can watch from their YouTube channel, the video number 12, if they want. And again, there's, there's the link on the on the on the chat. Okay. Okay. Here we can work. We work on the technical qualities, but in a situation, and also we are working again in the space of reactions. If I move forward to to another video, wait a second. Okay, I move to the next one. This is another drill I use a lot still to improve the players technically. Uh, I want to I wanna explain this a bit because uh, this is something I like, this is something I used to do uh, since I start to coach. I something, this is something I did also at first team level. It's very engaging for the players because it's a head tennis but we can use this at tennis also as a conditioning work because there is a lot of sprints, a lot of um, involvement and I like it a lot because the players like it and uh, it's very useful technically and, and also physically because if it lasts long, it's a normal head tennis, uh, the rules are normal but then when the, once the team uh, throw the ball to the other pitch, they have to Sprint out and uh, swap with the, with the teammates waiting outside. Uh, I hope when uh, everyone will have the chance to watch the, the video clip, we'll uh, enjoy more, we'll uh, appreciate more. And this is again, once uh, something I use to, to work technically on the players, with the players. I, I, I'm, I believe that this head tennis is, is very uh, useful for the technical improvement of the players because they uh, they can use their technique in uh, different ways 
unbalanced, and, and, and so on. This is what uh, Piso from Scotland, Peter McDonald, was asking. We, uh, we have extra sessions, and um, so something that we have a department, basically, uh, of coaches that work with the, individually with the players, with the players or small groups of players, to work on their uh, technical uh, gaps, if, uh, if you know what I mean. For example, in this clip, uh, which is the number 14, there is a, a video of a player of mine last year working on his uh, weak foot, which was the left. There are two coaches working with him, and this happened three times a week for the player. There are different coaches for different players working three times a week before or after the session and they work individually uh, with him or like in the next video the number 15 which is the last one in this case is my assistant working it was a monday and he brought in a group of four or five players and he set up uh, a, a structure to work technically with them maybe a bit more um, situational, but still he has the time to work uh, more on the technical qualities of the players. And this is something that uh, sometimes uh, can be uh, for, for, uh, can, can be for different, different situations. Like for example, what uh, Piso was asking before, uh, a player that, have problems in delivering the ball, the ball in the box by um, wide area. We, for sure, we work on uh, on uh, his uh, on this specific ability or problem to improve this. Still, I think that the real improvement will happen. Will uh, will um, he will uh, he really improve only when in the real situation will be able to to perform. Uh, in the right way. I hope I was clear. Okay, we go quickly to the end. Cognitive and emotional skills. Uh, I think and we think that there are... Uh, can you see it? No, it says... Wait, right now, wait a second, yeah, yeah, wait yeah. a second. Probably it's just the, the streaming. Yeah. Now. Allora. Sorry, I share the screen. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. So, cognitive and emotional skills. So, this is, everything is related to the um, emotions and character of the of the players. Is there something we can improve? I would say yes. Is there something that uh, is not improving by the coaches? Unfortunately, I would say yes. Uh, insight, uh, the, the the ability to to see to read the game. Of course, this is something the players can improve by by train by training in the way that I, I said before, I mentioned before, in the real game scenario. The eye for the goal, of course. Creativity, yes. Fighting spirit, eh, this is difficult. Eh, because sometimes players have it or not. Discipline, yes, is, is, is something that we can improve. We can work on it. Courage, no, unfortunately. <laughs> this is something I, I don't think is... Um, we can... We can uh, let's say we can uh, stimulate, but still is something that comes from uh, inside. Selflessness, communication and reaction to mistakes. Then, educational tools. So this is important because it's something that is related to, the, to our uh, week schedule. So uh, we, um, every single week, we make a, a meeting, a video meeting to analyze the, the, the game, to the previous game. 
to show what has been done well and what uh, hasn't. And this uh, this video are made with the, with the whole team once a week. Then there are individual video meetings, which is of course uh, led by myself or my assistant, and we we do it. We do this with the, with the uh, the player individually. Um, we don't do opposition analysis until under 18. So we don't work on the opponents. We don't show the play, our players the um, footage of the opponents unless uh, we are doing um, some uh, tournaments, important tournaments, or we are in the finals. Otherwise, during the season, we are not showing this because we think that the players don't need this for their development. Maybe later in their in their own uh, process. And sometimes we we ask the players to analyze their own performance. So it's not us, it's not me to analyze their performance. But sometimes, not always. Otherwise, if I think that this is something that is made too often, maybe loses some uh, um, effectiveness. Communication. Uh, I refer to communication about um, to a set of keywords that we have inside the the, the academy. I mean, related to uh, tactical situations. Uh, which help the players that come from an age, maybe they climb up to the next level, to know exactly what's going on during a session or during a game. Because everyone is using the same set of keywords for different uh, football, relation, uh, football situations. And then, of course, uh, the, the conditioning work, which is something I'm not... Uh, mentioning I'm not talking about now. I think that I had, I hope I had your attention. I want to finish with this last um, sentence, which I hope it sums up what I, uh, is my, my idea. We don't teach them how to climb up, climb a tree, but we take them to explore the woods. And I think that uh, this sentence can can uh, can help to understand everything I, I said so far. Thank you for your attention, and uh, I hope I was quite clear. Thank you, Fabrizio. Um, agora nestes últimos nestes últimos minutos, um, queria queria gostaria que fizessem que fizessem algumas questões. Vamos fazer desta maneira. Quem tiver questões um, Coloca, pode, pode, pode colocar aqui no chat que tem uma questão a colocar. Eu vou libertar o, o áudio, ou seja, vou ativar o microfone dessa, desse espectador. Fazem a pergunta diretamente ao Fabrício. Se conseguirem fazê-la em inglês, melhor. Se não conseguirem fazê-la em inglês, façam-na façam uh, em português e eu, entretanto, faço a, a tradução para o, para o Fabrício e uh, o mesmo também se aplica do Fabrício para, para o espectador. Quem tiver uma questão... Pode colocar aqui uh, que quer fazer uma, uma questão e, entretanto, eu uh, liberto o microfone e faço a, micro, uh, a pergunta ao Fabrício. Um, whoever has a question, uh, please uh, put the, that you have interest to do a, a question in the chat because I will open your microphone and then you can uh, do the, the question directly to, to Fabrício, ok? So, let's see here... My, Matthias. Matthias. Yeah. Let's see here. This one, you mean, did you mix age group, group players? Yeah, he's asking if, do you mix age group mm. players? If yes, when? Or if, not, if not, why? Why? Uh, Yes, uh, for example, my 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 group of uh, players in my group of players, which is under seventeen, uh, I have also four or five, four, mm, yeah, four 
uh, sometimes five um, players 2004 so 16 years old uh, because they are national team players the club believe that these players um, have already reached a, a level where they can not to improve they have to compete with the with the the older players so in this uh, regard yes the the answer is yes uh, and this is the reason so basically we think that when a player is uh, is ready the club will believe is ready uh, for his uh, own sake his own improvement is better to move it to move him up uh, with the with the next uh, with with the older players with the older uh, team it's okay I hope. Mati Matthias, is everything okay? So oh, yes. Did... Oh, you can hear me. Oh, I didn't check it. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you for, for your answer. Um, my question was also um, on the Monday training. Ah, okay. This, this could be one opportunity for sometimes if some players from the, on the 14, 15 or 17 need the same things. These yes. Things that you do or not? Uh, yes, we do that. We do that. Uh, taking account that this happen also when it comes to uh, recovery of injured players. Uh, we have a program, we have a, a couple of coaches, fitness coaches, who are, um, their, their task is to work uh, with the injured players one week or two weeks before they come back to the, with the team. And normally they do a technical work and they do that with uh, different players coming from different different um, age level, um, with regard to the individual work that we do as a department, uh, is not is not that um, is not it doesn't happen that often. So can happen, uh, for example, if the there is a under 15 player and another 17 player that need the same. Uh, treatment let's say let me use this word then there is the chance to work to make them work together okay okay but it's not something that happen regularly can happen is not something that um, is made by by as a rule okay thank you no problem other Coming back anyway, while we wait, coming back to your answer, to your question, Matthias, I personally believe that, for example, a player, a 14 years player, 14 years old player or 15 years old player, if sometimes maybe once a week can train with the others, uh, with the older groups, is uh, beneficial for him, for him, for him. This is my personal opinion. Huh? And I know that is something up, uh, that happened in uh, other clubs. Man United, for example, uh, they used to, maybe they used to do the opposite. They send an older player to the to the younger age, to uh, because they think that this the presence of this player can be like um, a drive for the others uh, to emulate this this uh, teammate. Okay, Fabrizio, we have here another question from, yeah. from uh, Ricardo. Um, he's asking, um, how do you do the connection between um, the, the young teams, the young teams to the, the first team? And if the, the big principles of the game or of your methodology, of AS Roma methodology, uh, are the same or there's an there's a, a slight differences between that or if you have uh, freedom to to apply your own style of uh, of coaching uh, with regard to the academy as i said before there is a set of guidelines uh, that um, drive the, the the whole process until the under 19 under 18 i would say under 19 is already under the umbrella of the first team, if you know what I mean. Okay. Uh, there is no 
connection. Of, I don't know if it's a good or, or a bad thing. No connection, not direct connection between the first team, what the first team do, and what the academy do. Like, for example, at Ajax uh, or Barcelona or, or, or other clubs that usually do this. Uh, this season, in particular, incidentally, there is this connection, but not because it's a choice, because uh, Paolo Fonseca, uh, his principles of play, the, the going model of the first team, uh, is a ref reflection. They, our, our game model is a reflection of what, what the first team do when, uh, when uh, it comes to game model. But maybe next year there is another coach with a totally different vision. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have to follow that vision. Uh, and I think this is right because otherwise different coach in the first team and everything changed uh, down, down the, the youth academy. I don't think it's a, it's a good thing for the, for the young players. Okay. Uh, Tomás está, está aqui a, tem aqui a oportunidade aqui de colocar uma questão. Uh, Tomás, podes colocar a questão pelo, pelo chat, que eu faço a questão, depois traduzo depois diretamente para, para o Fabrício, ok? Um, any other questions? Uh, feel free to ask, guys, because we already uh, finished the presentation of Fabrício, so feel free to ask uh, uh, everything you want, ok? Uh, Estejam à vontade para fazer qualquer tipo de pergunta neste momento. A apresentação do Fabrício já terminou. Portanto, estamos agora no, nesta fase final de perguntas e respostas. Quando precisarem de fazer alguma questão, estejam à vontade. Posso libertar também o vosso áudio para, para que coloquem as questões. Eu queria algumas perguntas em português, se você pode traduzir. Like, por exemplo, a última pergunta, Federico. Sim, yeah, Federico está dizendo que, desde que você está em um top club, um, um, there's there's some type of pressure for the the, the little to little the games. Uh, teams to win games. No, I mean uh, the pressure for in in our club is more about winning uh, the games according to our game model. If you know what I mean, um, I want to give you an example. Um, when I made this uh, presentation, the same presentation for a, the same, a same similar webinar in, in Italy uh, last week, uh, um, few, some coaches went to internet and found a game was on YouTube, and it was the last, the only one game that we lost this season. Okay, the only defeat we had this season. But uh, what I been told, and this was something that made me happy, that despite the defeat, the coaches that watched this game uh, saw exactly what, the, what the, the principles that I was talking. So this is what we try to, to achieve. Uh, the players can perform the game model no matter the result. Then, of course, they are good, and the game model probably is good, and we are uh, we we are always achieving results, but once again, we don't put the results ahead of the of the development, ahead of the the style, ahead of what the the club want uh, to achieve those results. Okay, there's some some two more questions about um, one is from Jose is asking uh, how big are the technical teams. All right, the staff. Mm -hmm. I can talk. Of course, um, under nineteen, they have a couple of uh, coaches more because it's uh, more about um, older players that are close to the first team. But under from under uh, eighteen uh, down, uh, for example, uh, there is in my age level age group there is me, my assistant fitness coach, goalkeeping coach, uh, and of course the medical staff. But basically four coaches on the field together. Um, myself, my assistant, the fitness coach. Uh, the fitness coach works only uh, outside of the, of the sessions. 
during the sessions, two hour session, the fitness coach work with me, assist me to, uh, uh, to help me to see the intensity of the session. Maybe if it's better to stop something, to, to adapt something, but it's not working straight directly with the, with the, with the, just for few, very few parts of the session and not always, not all in all the sessions, maybe 10, 12 minutes, but otherwise everything we do is all, is with the ball. Okay, uh, we have here a question of uh, Gabriel. He's asking if uh, all the players have the individual uh, exercise drills or there is a selection. Um, there is a selection. Otherwise, because if we want to work to be effective in this kind of uh, practice, uh, you have to work a lot with uh, one or two players. I mean, there is a rotation, a rotation of players, but the whole, during the whole season, not all the players are involved in this, uh, in this um, department, in these uh, moments. Sometimes the club is the club itself that asks us to, to follow these players, one or two players besides the others. Maybe because they think that they need more or they, wa we, they want us to work a lot on uh, something that they do already well because sometimes you you can't work only with on the weakness of the player because maybe you can improve five percent ten percent but sometimes maybe it's better to enhance so to reinforce something they do already well because they can do even better and they can be more effective if you know what i mean i don't believe that if a right-footed player play uh, learn to play a bit better with his left foot will become a better player. Maybe he will become a better player, a more effective player, if he will do best, even better what he is already doing well. Okay. Um, let me just uh, open here the, the, the microphone from Tomás. Tomás wants to, to ask a question. Yeah. He will ask in Portuguese and then I will translate to you. Okay, okay. Fabrizio? Tomás. Consegue-me ouvir, André? Consigo, consigo. A minha questão, pronto, obrigado por teres libertado, é mais fácil explicar. A minha questão é sobre aquela frase que o Mr. colocou agora no fim, sobre a descoberta guiada. Em Portugal, muitas vezes fala-se que há muitos treinadores que criam situações muito fechadas ou situações fechadas para os atletas, porque os atletas realizam, por exemplo, um movimento porque o, atleta, porque o treinador pediu e não porque o atleta percebeu que era esse o espaço a ocupar. Sendo assim, a questão que eu queria colocar ao Mister era, por exemplo, nós temos um lateral que tem características mais de jogo por fora e um que tem mais características de jogo por dentro. Nós deveríamos dizer aos atletas que, nas suas, que eles devem aproveitar as suas características, ou seja, o que joga por fora, jogar mais por fora, porque nós estamos a querer melhorar as características do jogador, ou isso irá criar uma dessas situações fechadas e ele não irá conseguir evoluir tanto como nós desejamos. Eu não sei se conseguiu fazer-me explicar. Sim, perfeitamente, perfeitamente, mas Obrigado, obrigado. Um, nada, nada. Obrigado. Uh, Fabrizio, Tomás is asking uh, about um, about the, the the last sentence that you where where you finish your presentation yeah. uh, about the um, the guidance discovery uh, yeah. that that we say here in Portugal. Uh, he's asking about like uh, for an example, if you have um, uh, two to one right back or or two right backs, uh, full right backs. Uh, if one is better uh, in the outside game and the other one is better in the inside game, um, what is your um, what is your opinion about this? If you do um, um, constrict the player, if you if you tell him, okay, you're good on on the outside game, continue to doing it, or you will tell him to um, Train, train harder and try to focus on the inside game as well because we'll make him complete yeah. as a complete uh, fullback. I don't know if, if you understand that. No, no, no. Maj was, was asking about this. Uh, if you're trying to, to, to improve the player as he is or you're trying to improve the player with all the tools that you can okay. have to, okay. to be a, Absolutely. a good, I, I understood. player. I understood perfectly. I think there is a difference between what I, I was saying before, in terms of improving just a bit, maybe uh, one technical uh, 
um, part. So as I was saying before, maybe improve a bit better with the, is, uh, the left foot if you are right footed, which this is something. I think is a different, there is a difference between what I was saying and what Thomas is asking. Because I think that nowadays the football, modern football, is a, requires that the players can perform everywhere on the field. Uh, until uh, 10 years ago, I think even five, a, a right back was, uh, was required only to, to run uh, near the touch line and try to and to reach the, um, the end line and put crosses in. Now it's not anymore like this. So my... So he's, to, to come back to the, to the um, trees and the, and, and the woods, so this right back is already good to climb the tree. Now I have to help him to explore the woods, which means go and play also inside the field. So in this, in this regard, I have to uh, show him that there are many other possibilities because I'm, I, in this way I'm helping him to become a better player. Otherwise, he will always be the player that he can perform one thing, but now he is required to play also other things. So in this regard, especially for a right back, if I have a right back that he can play already, uh, perform when he plays inside, I, I think he has something more than the other one. So I have my, my task is to try and help the other one to play also inside, uh, in, more inside in the field. This is my idea, but then this depends also on the game model. In my game model, I need players that are capable to do that. Maybe other coaches in other teams or the clubs prefer to have someone who always try to uh, beat his opponent in a, near the touchline and then go straight. This is a, there is nothing right or wrong. This is something that I believe. Okay, uh, we have here some questions about the game model, but we already yeah. talked about it. We already discussed that uh, because uh, the, the game model between um, the, the young ages or the, the, young, the young teams and the, the, the professional team, we already discussed that. Uh, there was a big differences, but nowadays with Paul Fonseca, uh, uh, probably the, um, the differences are, are shorter and yeah. they are trying to, to have a uh, specific idea for, for everyone in the club. So um, I think there's the question that uh, Fabio is asking. Uh, pergunta que o Fabio está a colocar já, já foi aqui falado pelo Fabrício. Uh, temos aqui também uma pergunta uh, mais um pouco, um pouco diferente aqui relativamente ao... Oh, John, John, John is asking, do you give your players homework? And if so, are those only technical? And how do you follow their development? Uh, no, I think homeworks uh, are not tailored for um, under 17 players. This, uh, we, can, we, we could talk a lot about this. I think, for example, homeworks, technical homeworks are fantastic for especially in the in the first uh, in the younger ages we have here as a guests in the in the in some um, coaches from celtic glasgow and i i, I want to say hello to them uh, at celtic they do a lot of these homeworks in the when they are 9 10 11 because they uh, in in this way they 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 can exploit all the time outside of the session to, to improve technically. But uh, we are not doing this at S Roma, but especially at my age level, we are not giving homeworks, if not related to something uh, more cognitive, not technical. So homeworks, we, I, do home, I, I, I give them homeworks, analyze games, um, other games analyze uh, top top teams because I think this if they become students of the game they can improve but um, I don't uh, no I would say no we don't give homeworks okay we have here a question from from Tadeu uh, and Tadeu is asking uh, about the goalkeepers 
Yeah. Uh, he's asking it. Um, uh, in what way that you that you manage uh, your your game model and your coaching methodology regarding the goalkeepers um, and the goalkeepers itself and the goalkeepers in the training session with the, with the team? Okay. Uh, in my game model, the goalkeepers are. Uh, uh, massive important, massively important, because especially if we want to build up from the back, uh, we can't uh, do without the goalkeeper. And I always, during my coaching session, I always put uh, the goalkeepers under pressure because I want them to cope with this pressure. Don't kick the ball away. Try always to 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 find the right the the free teammate. Of course, it's a matter of collaboration. It's not only about the goalkeeper, it's about also the players that release themselves, they show themselves available for a pass. And I have to say that working every day with this... Um, I have other clips, of course, because one big uh, thing from the, of the club, of my club, we can film every single session. So um, there are sessions where I put... Uh, the goalkeeper under pressure just to play always with his feet because I think is a is too much important nowadays in modern football especially in the in our game model and also of course when they train with the with their goalkeeper coach the goalkeeper coach work a lot also uh, on this uh, specific topic so they try to uh, give them confidence they, the goalkeeper Unfortunately, they will never be so good with uh, with their feet. Uh, if we are, of course, there are exceptions like uh, uh, Ederson uh, or uh, other, you know, fantastic goalkeepers. They play as uh, playmakers. But young goalkeepers, you, you have to give them also the chance to to make mistakes. We, oh, I have to say, this season we we conceded all, many goals, maybe because the goalkeeper tried to play out from the back. And he didn't succeed, and we, we considered a goal. But I don't care. I don't care. As long as he can keep going and do it again, next time he will, uh, he will do it better. Uh, so uh, this is part of the, the goalkeeper, goalkeeper improvement. Okay, perfect. We have uh, here Ismael wants to ask a question. Ismael, vou aqui ativar aqui o teu, o teu adro. Okay? ok? Ok, ok. Força. Ok, obrigado. Posso fazer em português? Força, eu faço a tradução para... Pronto, a basicamente, uh, segundo a priorização tática, eu queria saber se, se o Mr. dividia pelos dias da semana, por exemplo, se num dia trabalhava micro princípios, meso, noutros macro, uh, por setores, intensorial, noutros dias uh, grupais ou coletivos, basicamente isso fazia essa divisão. Oh, okay. I understood. When Did I, you want, I heard, you understood? Okay, yeah, maybe no. I understood. Thank you, obrigado. I understood about ma macro principles, micro principles. Yeah, regarding the the, the, the tactical periodization. Yeah. Uh, if uh, you do um, different types of of, uh, of training uh, during the, the week, uh, mm -hmm. in macro, micro, um, collective, grupal. Um, so, uh, as I, I as I said before. I think football is a is a complex uh, of of principles, but we can I, I personally believe that we can't split principles princi principle micro micro micro. Otherwise, we we uh, we split too much. And football is not the um, my micro principles together. Is is the whole everything is related to something else. So I don't believe that much on splitting and uh, breaking, breaking, breaking every single thing. So tactical periodization for me means today I'm working in possession, but specifically building up from the back, for example. Uh, this is a micro principle for me. Uh, but another micro principle can be um, when uh, when uh, we 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 work on creating goal scoring opportunities so working on the final third of the field uh, a micro principle can be and is one of our principles in that specific area i want 
players try to uh, break the opponent back four by playing one twos or going with uh, uh, attacking the, the, the full the, the back four opponent back four with a late run from uh, from behind. This is a micro principle, but uh, I'm not splitting. I'm not breaking uh, down every single uh, uh, principle. Otherwise, uh, I can't. In my opinion, you can't coach one small part of the of the game. The game is uh, something that is uh, is a co is a complex of uh, uh, of principles together, and everything is too related with the other. The only thing, as I said, I I, I personally I I'm able to to train and to coach separate from the others is the is the back four so the the the, the relationship with the with the the, the back four uh, when they have to drop when they have to to stay when they have to uh, and that's it but uh, for me it's difficult to train the team uh, in in that specific way step by step uh, little by little principle by principle i prefer to set up something realistic and then from that situation, when something happened, because it happened everything in a, in a small, uh, uh, maybe in, in half an hour of a, of, a, of a session, realistic session, can happen everything. And I have to be able to observe. And if something happened, if it's right, I have to fix it. I have to, sorry, I have to reinforce because it's, uh, it's something that has been done right. If it's uh, wrong, I have to stop and correct ok, any other questions? mais algumas perguntas pessoal para já vamos com duas horas e meia I, I think uh, uh, as I said before Andres, if you want to give my email address yeah. if someone want to ask I am more than available and more than happy to 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 discuss with the with the colleagues. Okay, just a second. Is this this email from Fabrizio? Everyone who wants to to send some questions to Fabrizio, okay? Here's the his email account, okay? Um, so, uh, estava a dizer aqui está o email do, do Fabrizio. Então, alguém quer entrar em contato com o Fabrizio tem aqui o email, okay? Uh, visto não haver mais mais perguntas. Uh, so, if does anyone doesn't have any any questions. Um, we finish here our, our lecture, our first lecture with Fabrizio. Terminamos aqui então a primeira, a primeira formação que contamos com a presença do Fabrizio. Uh, obrigado a todos vocês por, por estarem presentes, por confiarem também no, no Elite Performance Football para continuarem a desenvolver as vossas, as, vossas, as, vossas, as vossas capacidades e continuarem a trilhar o vosso caminho. Um, as I was saying, uh, thank you for trusting in the Elite Performance Football for um, keep improving yourselves, okay? And uh, keep moving forward in this, in this area. Uh, I would like to, to thank to Fabricio for trusting in me again for, uh, for his participation in, uh, in this project. Um, we will keep in touch, Fabricio. Um, yes. Thank you very much. Was thank you. Thank very, you all. very good. Estava a dizer que ficamos muito contentes por poder contar novamente com o Fabrício um, espero que tenha sido, tenha, tenha sido o vosso agrado a nossa opinião foi uh, e estamos, estamos aqui para o necessário, como disse vamos também ter uh, dispos, uh, à disposição no nosso canal do Youtube também o vídeo sobre esta, esta formação uh, portanto passem lá, nós entretanto vamos colocar também os links das nossas redes sociais vai lá estar Uh, terça-feira terça-feira vamos ter também um live uh, com uh, o treinador do Sub-16 do Barnot, Tom Donati uh, portanto sigam também a nossa página vai ser, vai, ser também, vai ser também uma conversa muito positiva 
vamos traçar, vamos falar praticamente tudo acerca do, do futebol de formação inglês e do que mudou uh, de há uns anos para cá, onde uh, eram bons, neste momento já, já ganham torneios, já fazem diferença, são dos melhores também jogadores a nível, a nível mundial, uh, portanto acompanhem as nossas páginas, acompanhem também aquilo que vamos, vamos fazendo e vamos criando, porque isto é para vocês, é pelo futebol uh, e obrigado a todos. I was saying that uh, Tuesday, next Tuesday we'll have a live, um, a live chat with uh, Tom Donati, is the under 16 uh, coach of Bournemouth from mm. the Premier League. Uh, right. Tom Donati worked the, in Peterborough as a, as a technical director, in Chelsea as well. So we'll have a, a, a really nice, nice chat with him, uh, talk about the English football and the differences between um, English football years ago and nowadays, because they already have, uh, they had great players, but right now they have Uh, some one of the best players in the world and uh, we will discuss a lot of these things so we count on you and count, we count on your presence so thank you very much once again uh, we're doing this for you we're doing this we're doing this for football so thank you very much okay thanks thanks Fabrizio ciao obrigado ciao. obrigado ciao